Welcome everyone to the championship match of the 2022 Bowling Promotion Strike Tour Series Singles Competition. This match features the winners of the French and International Semi-Finals, who are Valentin Saulnier, who beat fellow countryman Enzo Franco, 258 to 247, and Daniel McEwen from the US, who defeated Dennis Grunheit of Germany, 233 to 225. You can find both these semifinal matches on this same YouTube channel. So here we are with our championship match between Danielle McEwen and Valentin Saulnier. And we're expecting some high scores here. We are on this Gateway Arch 42 foot pattern. Danielle will start on the left lane. She's going to stay with that night row that she's been using that she used to defeat Dennis. And I think she's Pointing to the score here. We'll see if she gets things kicked off here in a minute. She will start on the left lane, which means she will finish on the right, and she will finish last in this match, which could be a very pressure-packed situation if we are tied or close to it. Danielle, by international rules, gets an eight-pin handicap on this match, which she actually used to defeat Grunheide. They tied at 225, but her eight pins gave her the 233-225 victory. And we will track her eight pin handicap through this match to make sure that we have the correct score and who's ahead at any given time. So Danielle, right down the third arrow, that beautiful leverage turns up just a little bit late to the pocket and there's a solid 10 pin. And Danielle will go across lane with no problem on the 10, good shot there. As we said, we're on the gateway arch pattern. More oil in the middle than on the outside, so you could certainly use that to your advantage, and the bowlers have. You can see by the scores. Now, here's an interesting play by Saulnier. Again, we, this is our third match on this pair with practice, so we're seeing a little bit of transition, a little bit of carry down, and Valentin has actually balled up, if you will, to an infinite physics from Storm. Last time he used a reality check and this infinite physics is going to have a lot harder turn on the back. Oh my goodness. What a shot that was and what a result. That That is very strange. Watch this hit. Watch the head pin. The head pin is supposed to go to the sideboard and take out that four pin and yet it somehow goes right in front of it. It deflects to go right in front of it and leaving a rather unfortunate uh, four pin for Valentin on a pretty good bowling shot. And he'll just go cross lane to this four pin. Shouldn't have any trouble. As we said, he switched to the infinite physics, which will give him more back end. Ironically, he was throwing the reality check last game, and his opponent was throwing the infinite physics and had almost a little bit too much flip on the back, and it was only one or two shots that uh, determined the difference in that match. And Valentin controlled that reality check very well, but obviously he feels the need for more back end, so he switched over to this infinite physics. It'll be interesting to see if Danielle stays with that night road uh, and if she can get the back end the way she wants it to carry these pins. Shout out to Bruno Bedone and Marc Chavet, your French commentators for this match. There will be an interview with Marc at the end of the video with the winner. So you might want to stick around for that. And there's another good looking shot by, oh my goodness, and another weird result. He threw the ball very, very well, gets it out to the dry. And watch this pick up, turn left, turn left, so powerful. It just blows right by the nine pin. And this is one of those modern leaves that we have now. Ball so powerful combined with a powerful release by this young player that the ball just turns right by the nine pin and doesn't deflect as it should to take that nine out. So that will be spare, spare start for Valentin. And then we'll see how Danielle tackles this right lane. Danielle, of course, with seven PWBA Tour titles, two majors, and five other titles, including numerous international titles. She first won in 2015 with the relaunch of the PWBA Tour. And another beautiful shot right over 15. He gets the 10 to go. Great shot there. So there's the hit you're looking for. Turns it up. And 
look at the six pin nudge that 10 out beautiful result there. And that will actually give Danielle a nine pin lead at this point in the proceedings. And as usual, another carbon copy. Good shot. Comes up a little bit high for a four pin. So very frustrating to go 10 pin, then four pin as she makes her adjustment to try to carry the 10. The ball turns a little bit early, comes up a little bit high for the four pin. And now we are fishing to try to figure out a way to knock all the pins down. And you see that quite a bit on easier conditions. And quite often, these bowlers will adjust on strikes. If they don't like the way the ball went through the pins, uh, they'll make a move on a strike just to keep strings going. Yeah, I've seen that quite often. And when you see super high scores out of pros, they are making their moves even if they are stringing strikes. Now Valentin with the nine pin deficit, eight of which due to McEwen's handicap. Lines up, takes his time, and gets all of that one out to the dry. And look at that power coming back off the dry. Beautiful shot there. And he got that one the further right than any shot so far, but look at the hit. Got all around that one, gets it out to probably the sixth or seventh board, makes the turn, and all that power delivered to the pins. Beautiful shot there by Valentin. Valentin, of course, the captain of his Baker team for the Baker series of this competition that was won by Team Vega. Team Vega, of course, consisted of Daniel McEwen, captain and anchor player lefty Matt McNeil, Gwendol Jolif of France, and Maria Jose Rodriguez, the pro from Colombia. Congratulations to them. And you can see those matches, nine matches on this same YouTube channel. We're up to 25,000 subscribers on this channel, so thanks, everyone, for your support. And look at that to the right. Another beautiful shot. Gets the 10 to go. There's the double. And now that nine pin deficit is a one pin advantage. Beautiful shot there by Valentin, and he knew it. That late 10 is the bowler's best friend. Oh, Danielle, can she figure out this carry? And another good shot over 15, gets up, another ring 10. And unfortunately, she's, uh, in, she's a little bit trapped because she came up a little high for the four pin, and now here's a 10 pin, and she's trying to figure out what moves to make. Does she move her feet right? And the play with fire a little bit. If you lay it down on that dry, the ball could hook immediately. Uh, do you switch balls? Do you go to something a little bit more powerful, maybe? Do you change your hand position? There's lots of tools that these pros have, some of which are subtle, especially hand position changes are not necessarily always easy to pick, always easy to catch. But there are lots of tools these pros have to figure out how to knock all the pins down. And we can expect Danielle to make her adjustments. We're now at a two-pin match with so. Valentin in the lead. And Danielle, a beautiful shot down the oil and gets the crumbling bucket mixer. And that may be one of the more reliable shots for her. She's been so perfect in the pocket, but nibbling around getting strikes. She comes up late, gets that in the oil, gets a little bit long, crumbles the bucket, carry the seven. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And now Valentin, with his two-pin lead, can he extend it to 12? Such a pleasure to watch all this talent. And shout out to Bruno Badone for bringing us all these great matches. And another ripping shot. Oh, he just got all of that. Came up right down the oil, comes up, slaps the 10. Oh, he really ripped through that one. Beautiful shot, got it all at the bottom. And look at the result. The uh, slap 10 
extend the lead to 12 now for Saunier. That is including Danielle's eight pin handicap. Saunier taking his time in this left lane. See if he makes an adjustment. We haven't really seen either lane present itself. Maybe the left lane's presented a hair dryer, uh, just a just a tad, but not not really much to notice. Uh, the topography of these lanes has been pretty consistent from lane to lane. And there's another good shot down the middle, and there's a ripping ten pin. Messenger comes screaming back across the deck, but in front of the 10, would not go. So Valentin is actually pretty deep there. That was fourth arrow. That's deeper than he's been in any other shot. And it does catch more of the oil, goes down the lane, comes in late, and gets the screaming Messenger that will not go. So now we're back to an 11-pin match. And Danielle will be able to get it within one if she can strike on her next shot. And no problem on the conversion there. Again, Marc Chavez is the voice of the Tour de France over in France. And he will be interviewing the winner of this match. So stick around for that at the end of this championship match. Winner, of course, taking the 2022 Burling Promotion Strike Tour Series Singles title. And Danielle comes up and rips the rack for the double, making it happen. I think she moved everything right a little bit on that shot. It looks like, yep, a little bit to the right of the third arrow. Gets a little bit more dry. Turn it up. And there's that power ripping the rack. Beautiful shot. Beautiful adjustment. Gets to within one pin of this match. And let's see if she can extend to three here. She had a light mixer on this lane last time and has not struck other than that. Another beautiful shot in the pocket, square in the pocket for another ring 10. And it seems like it, if she makes the shot that hits the pocket the way she wants to, she can't get the pins to fall. And she says, oh. The other thing you should realize is that when the bowlers let the ball go, most of the time they know that there's risk of leaving that 10 pin. And 10 pins are uh, really predictable as far as the six around the 10. Uh, it does mean you, if you're on an easy pattern, you really do need to make a move, try to slap those 10s out of there. They're not just bad luck. Now, Valentin with the two pin lead and honestly the break. Uh, with Danielle not tripling. And let's see if he can take advantage of that and reclaim the lead here. Should I say extend his lead? He's up by two right now. Nice fluent arm swing. Gets around it, rips it. Textbook. Strike there by Saulnier. Beautiful shot. And he is lined up. Watch this. Right between third and fourth arrow. Out to the dry. Turns up. So we call it no drama strike. Ball turns right through the pins. There's no doubt about it. Two pin match. Here we go. into the eighth frame. Let's see if Saulnier can extend his lead here. He really has been robbed <laughs> on several shots. I know we talked about 10 pins and such, but that screaming four pin and the messenger 10 could have easily gone. And another beautiful shot, no drama strike there for Saulnier to extend his lead to 12. And let's see how Danielle reacts to that. She's a seasoned tour player, knows how to deal with the pressure. The question is, can she figure out 
how to get that night row through the pins the right way. She ripped the rack last time in this lane. Let's see what happens. And she moved left, turns it up. Another solid 10. So frustrating. I feel her. I feel her anguish having gone through this many times. Anybody who's bowled competitively knows what it means to be lined up on a pair, but you just can't figure out the carry. But you're afraid to move too much because you certainly don't want to give the pocket away. And no problem on the spare there. Unfortunately, leaves her 13 behind now. And let's see how she responds. She has a possible 235 in the wood were she to strike out with her handicap. And gets up. Another good shot and roll that 10 pin. There's one that carries. Thank you very much. And good shot there by Danielle. It was, it was another week 10, but she got the roller that time to get the carry. She says, oh, come on, come on. Let's go. Roll it. Roll it. Yes. Now we're talking. That's the one. Sets her up for the 10th frame and does indeed set her up for the 235 possible. Valentine now at a 228 pace. So if he's interested in locking up this match, he either has to strike here or he has to double in the 10th. This is Valentine's ninth and 10th. Certainly controls his own destiny no matter what. And gets a round one, gets it up. Another perfect, what we call a vortex strike. For Valentin Saulnier, and he will, that will put him into the 230s, which is Daniel's possible. Watch this shot. Another textbook out to the dry. Turns up. Dead flush through the pins. Beautiful shot. So short of losing some count here, um, any mark will do it. If he were to go eight or less, he could certainly open the door for Danielle. But let's see what happens. Or if he were to open any open would open the door for Danielle. Let's see what happens. The right-hander sets. Look at those eyes focused on his target. Steady head, beautiful shot, and smashes the pins and gets the late carry on the seven pin. We have seen that pin over the seven to leave it. Let's see, I think it was the head pin. Watch the seven pin. The pin, the head goes back, and it does taps the taps the seven pin and takes it out, and that will be into the 240s for Valentin, and he has locked up the singles title. Congratulations, Valentin Saulnier, the 2022 Bowling Promotion Strike Tour Series singles champion, and just came back with a flurry of strikes in the end. How about the back five right now? And that will propel him into the 250s. So a beautiful series of shots by Valentin. Just takes control of the match later on and arguably should have had control sooner, uh, except for some bad breaks, but uh, came through in the end. And Valentin is your 2022 singles champion. He will be interviewed by Mark Chavez at the end of this match. So stick around for that. And we will see Danielle complete her game once again. There's the first miss of the pocket <laughs> that we've seen by either player. And that will put him in a total of 256. What a beautiful game by Valentin Saulnier. And matched only, exceeded only by his 258 that he used to defeat uh, countryman Enzo Franco. So Valentin averaging 257 in his two matches to claim the singles title. Well, there's a ball change by Danielle. She switched to that infinite physics, which is the same ball that, that Valentin is using. But look, it, gets, it does the same thing. Comes up late and still rips the 10. So in a way, she might be glad that that didn't carry out. <laughs> she had that gone and just toasted the rack, she might be a little, even a little bit more frustrated. But I can tell you for a pro like Danielle to make all those good shots and not be rewarded uh, is frustrating, but you know she'll be back. She's so talented. Uh, she's got the track record. 
uh, and she's all business. So congratulations to Danielle on a very strong second place finish. And once again comes up and then she misses the pocket. So that will be a nice finish for Danielle. She'll be 212 with her handicap and a match that's much, much closer than this. They were tied just three frames ago. And Valentin Saulnier took charge at the end of this at the end of his match. In fact, he threw eight strikes. You can see here in the summary, five were in the back half of the game. Uh, and Danielle only mustering four strikes with uh, one double clean, which gives her puts her in the two O's, and then with six spares. So Congratulations to both players, and please, once again, stick around for the interview. Once again, Bruce Hall, your international voice for the 2022 Bowling Promotion Strike Tour Series. La traditionnelle remise, évidemment protocolaire, du trophée de la victoire. Valentin Saulnier et l'équipe de France au sommet qui bat Daniel McEwan en finale. Eh bien, c'est Pascal Soncourt, directrice technique nationale de la Fédération française de bowling et de sport de qui, qui va remettre le trophée de la victoire à Valentin. Ah, quelle démonstration de force et de savoir-faire. Strike Man a frappé très, très fort pour aller chercher cette belle victoire. Ah, Valentin, évidemment, qui est félicité par la madame la DTN. Et Valentin, une petite réaction parce que là, vous avez tout simplement battu l'imbattable, la meilleure joueuse du monde. Et là, ça doit être une sensation toute particulière et cette victoire en plus sur le sol français. Euh, C'est une vraie satisfaction, euh, de, une vraie progression pour moi parce que souvent j'avais un peu de, de difficulté à me faire confiance sur mes choix en, en finale. Là, on a vu sur la demi-finale avec le coach que ma, ma solution ne, ne tiendrait pas à la finale. On a allé sur les pistes d'échauffement, on a trouvé quelque chose d'autre. Euh, elle, quand je suis arrivé sur les pistes, j'ai vu qu'elle n'avait pas forcément un choix de boule que que j'aurais trouvé pertinent et ça s'avérait vrai. Elle a laissé beaucoup de fois des de quilles et puis moi j'ai continué sur ma lancée de, de strike et donc c'est une vraie satisfaction stratégique, technique puis un vrai plaisir de battre une championne du monde. C'est vraiment super. On tire le rideau sur cette première édition du Strike Tour. On a hâte de voir évidemment la suite pour Valentin Saulnier. Merci à toutes et à tous d'avoir été avec nous. Ça a été un véritable plaisir.